Praise the Lord, everybody. Pastor Nick here. Welcome to another linked couples ministry session. We're so glad that you can join us this evening. Uh, please do us a favor and share. Uh, of course, this is the last one of this year. We're so excited about what God has done for us this year. Through the bleakness of the season and through all the trouble, God has kept us. And uh, we're so glad that you can join us this evening. We're excited about 2022 as we present some new ways to get this information out to you. Uh, not just sessions where we come together and teach, but also through Q&A times, couples come together to talk. It's going to be a great time. We uh, hope that you will be here to participate. Again, please share. And uh, we're praying that God will uh, teach us tonight, open up our hearts and minds to help us to hear, to teach and to understand. Um, just a few tidbits for you. Uh, one of the first things I want to share with you tonight is learn to check your ego. Learning to check your ego. All of us have one. Learn to check your pride. All of us have pride. And pride is a killer of relationship. Because pride is the opposite of love. Pride and ego is all about self. Love is about the other. Love looks to benefit other people, while ego and pride look to benefit self. I'm not saying that you can't have desires or things that you want. What I am saying is that if everything is surrounded by you as the individual, the marriage cannot work because you're looking at you and not what's best for the whole. So we all have to learn to check our own individual ego and our own pride. When you look at the, um, the word pride in the Hebrew, it gives the imagery of a smoking vapor, of someone being in heavy fog. And when you're in heavy fog, everything else around you is distorted except you. The only thing you really see clearly is yourself. So prideful people, it's hard for them to see others because they can only see themselves. That's why when you talk to certain people and you're presenting an issue to them, they, they can't hear you clearly because they're only thinking about them. You go to yourself, you go to them for a problem and then they end up dominating the conversation What's wrong with them. Because why? Prideful people have a hard time seeing anyone besides them. And no relationship can thrive when ego is dominant. This is why humility and love must be the foundation for every relationship. Because humility is what builds and love is what builds a relationship. Here's going to be a tough one. Some of us can't apologize or change because of our ego. Some of us can't apologize or change because of our ego. We don't want people bringing up something we did wrong because our ego's in the way. Uh, we, we, we are challenged by this. Uh, I know people who, uh, because somebody said something, because they brought it up, I'm not going to change. You know, I want to be the one to change. But, you know, you don't bring it up to me. But if love is in a relationship and trust is in a relationship, we're allowed to talk about difficult things. So our ego, watch this, can help us maintain our pride and lose a person at the same time. Our ego can help us keep maintain ourselves but lose the person we care about. And if you start to lose the person because of ego, you lost. So all of us need to check our ego, check our pride at the door and learn to work as a community, as a unit rather than an individual. Number two, build the friendship. The friendship is the foundation for the relationship. We referred to this a few months ago. Build the relationship. Don't lose the friendship in the relationship. Don't lose the friendship in the relationship. Continue to have those friendship style conversations. Be the person's friend. You want to be able to love the person and still like the person at the same time. So it's important for us to maintain, watch this, a friendship and understand that just because this person is my spouse doesn't mean we're no longer friends. Because it's crazy when, you know, sometimes uh, when we're friends, we do a lot of sacrificial things for that person. But then when we get with them in a relationship, we start getting tightened up because we're afraid of being hurt or, you know, we don't want to be vulnerable around the person. But your friendship, 
will keep you vulnerable. Your friendship will keep you open and loving. And a strong friendship can build a great marriage. Build the friendship. Number three, know yourself outside of the person. Know yourself outside of the person. People don't complete us. They add to us. People don't complete us. They add to us. We have to know ourselves outside of the individual. The person comes to make us better. They don't come to make us whole. Our wholeness is between us and God. So I got to get to know me so I can get to know the person. You hear some people, I'm getting out, I'm trying to find myself and they try to find themselves among people. But how can we find ourselves among people when the people we're with don't even really know all of who they are? You have to know ourselves outside of the person. Because why? Unfair expectations, we're going to talk about this, can produce disappointment. Unfair expectations produce disappointment. Me expecting this person to complete me, heal me, fix everything wrong with me will lead to great disappointment because I'm trying to find me in that person rather than trying to find me in God. So number one, check your ego because pride kills love. Two, build the friendship. Three, know yourself outside of the person. Four, watch this y'all, love creates an expectation. Love creates an expectation. So when that expectation is let down, watch this, you don't feel loved. So love creates an expectation. The expectation we have, if it's let down, we don't feel loved. So if I expect something from somebody and they don't do it, I don't feel like they love me because they're not doing what I expect. They're not doing what love has produced called expectation. All right? I'm explaining. This is why definitions are important. And we talked about this before. Definitions are important. What does love look like to you? And what does love look like to your spouse? What does a husband look like to you and vice versa? And what does a wife look like to you and vice versa. Because when you go over definitions, you understand the person's expectations. So uh, uh, let me just use some random example. Um, love, say, say love for me is going out and spending time. It doesn't care where we go to, whether it's Chick-fil-A, whether it's uh, um, the pizza place, or whether it's Ruth Chris, I don't care as long as we spend time. My love produces an expectation. And if you love me, can you do those things to fulfill how I see love? The other person can see love as fancy restaurants, getting all glammed up, going out a night of the town, going to a show, and those things like that. People have a right to desire to be loved the way they want to be. And when I, when I, the way I see love, I expect you to love me in the way that I see it. And if you're not loving me in the way that I expect it, I don't feel like I'm loved. And watch this. I don't feel like I'm respected because you don't care about what I care about. So when you get into a relationship, go over definitions. What does love look like? A spouse look like? And then Agree to fulfill those expectations so the person can feel loved, can feel respected, can feel valued. Because if you don't love me in the way that I see love, I won't feel respected. I don't feel like you value me. I don't feel like you care about me because you're not fulfilling the way I see love. Love means that some things you know, love means that, that, that we're allowed to have these definitions. We're allowed to have these expectations. So, so when you tell me you love me, right? If you tell me you love me, an expectation comes with that word. Because if you love me, you'll do certain things. And if you love me, you won't do certain things. Okay. 
which means that love means that some things we shouldn't have to understand. Love means that some things we shouldn't have to understand. Okay? Because love creates an expectation for behavior. So if you love me, not only will you do things for me, but you also won't do things that will hurt me. Whew. So if you say you love me, act like you love me, right? And there are some things that we just shouldn't have to understand because if you love me, why would you do this to me? Whew. So it's not I did you wrong, but you know I love you. No, you know I love you because I'm not doing these things that will hurt you. Because love is allowed to have an expectation. And love is allowed to expect a certain behavior. If you love me, I shouldn't expect you to just up and hurt me on purpose. If you love me, you shouldn't be putting your hands on me. If you love me, you should treat me right, which means that love, love is revealed in behavior. And why? It all starts back with love creates an expectation. An expectation produces a behavior that I desire. Because if you love me, it comes with an expectation. Number five, last and we're out of here. Don't compare relationships. Don't compare relationships. Normal is relative. And normal changes. Normal is relative. And normal changes. The only thing that's normal is that normal changes. <laughs> normal adjusts. And what's the norm for others doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the norm for your relationship. What works for others may not work for your relationship. The thing that you got to ask yourself is what works for us, not what works for them should work for us. I'll give an example. If you have a busy couple, right? They may, especially like business owners and executives, they may not be home at 530 every day or six o'clock every day. Some people have a job where they can come home at 530 and not have to worry about work until the next day. And they're off on weekends. Some people, the way the nature of their job is, they work later. And some weekends they got to put time in. And you can't compare and say, well, over there, they come home and they spend more time together. What works for us based off our situation? What works for us based on our situation, which means you find a rhythm and work within that rhythm. Because why? What works for us may not work for others and vice versa. Find the rhythm that works for y'all and work the rhythm. Make the most of the time that you have and then try to be intentional about creating more time during the course of the month. Be intentional. So if we only got, because you got work, you got kids, if you got them, all that stuff. If all we got during the course of the week is, you know, 45 minutes each day with each other, with just the two of us, make the most of those 45 minutes. And then maybe on a Saturday or Sunday, you got more time. Cool. Because, you know, sometimes by the, you get up, you get yourself ready, you go to work. If you work all day, you got to fight traffic to get home. When you get home, if you got kids, you got to help with homework. You got to get them settled. You got to do dinner. You got to clean the house. And by the time you get home, by the time you get done cleaning and everybody's in bed, y'all both tired. And you're like, yo, <laughs> right? The other thing is, if you gave you yourself to everybody else all day, don't neglect your spouse because you gave yourself to everybody else. Now, there are days where you're like, Yo, I'm tired and, you know, can we just talk real quick and then fall asleep because I got to get up early in the morning. Those things happen. But we can't give ourselves to everybody else and then come home and have nothing for the people we live with. All right. Because why? A marriage can't thrive or live off of that. You have to be intentional and make the most of the time that you have. Which brings me to the last part of this about not comparing um, and not comparing your relationship with somebody else's, finding your own rhythm and creating your own time to spend with each other to make your relationship work. Balance is false. 
Balance is false. How do you manage it all? The answer is you, it's hard, right? And you may not do it right all the time. Balance is not a straight line, as the bishop says. That creates tension. Balance is this, all right? It changes. The demands of life change. You got a project on your job that dominates your focus, right? You may not be able to, you know, do certain things. But guess what? The project is over. It balances out. One of the kids gets sick. Y'all focused on that. The child gets better. Balances out. You know, somebody goes back to school during finals time. They're like this. Eventually finals over. Balances out. Learn to go with the rhythms of life and make it work. Because again, if you recognize that normal is relative and normal changes, you'll stop being so upset when your norm changes. Learn to go with the flow and work with each other that when life changes and when schedules change, let's find a way to be intentional to make this work. Some weeks are busier and some weeks aren't. Work with what you have and be intentional and know that eventually things can start to balance out. Learn to adjust to new normals because life continues to change and normal continues to change. So glad you can join us this evening. Don't forget to join us for Bible study tomorrow. Um, and you guys have a wonderful and safe Christmas. We love you all. We appreciate you. We're praying for you. Pray for us. We'll talk to you soon.